Hi, and welcome back. This is Shelley Latwin from GV Design Canada. This is our continuing series of matrix settings, and this is part six. If you look at these two items, the way they're set, this is technically called bead and bright, that the stones are set in a recessed channel held in by prongs or claws. This is technically pavé. Same thing, it's in a recessed area, and the stones are held in with claws or prongs. So that's why I brought both of these samples out here, because technically I'm following the same rules. Now, again, as I've been stressing over the last five videos, these are guidelines that I've been following for the last 20 years. Now, I've been tweaking these as I get feedback from my setters. If your setter does not agree with me, please listen to them. They're the one that's ultimately setting that piece and having to make it look great. So these are just guidelines, and hopefully you're also learning some tips and tricks along the way and that we all make a nice, beautiful piece of jewelry with the stone securely set. That's my goal. If you look at this piece here, I actually use gem on surface to lay out these gemstones. A couple of things. Number one, your edges. I don't like to go any narrower than 0.3. In fact, this edge here is 0.4, so if we go to the looking down viewport, I have shade, shade to turn on. And let's make sure project is turned on. And if we go to measure, this time I'm going to use the aligned dimension. And so if I go from one edge to the other, you can see I'm about 0.4. Okay. Also, I did create a curve. When I made this piece, these wings were actually rotated flat so in order to finish this piece off I tilted the wings and added a filler piece in here so that they'd have good contact for printing and something to solder the post onto. So the distance between the stones and the wall here is 0.2. There's got to be enough clearance in here so that these stones can drop down in here. Now remember, 0.2 is the thickness of a business card. 0.1 is the thickness of a sheet of paper. And again, if you're showing this to a client and they're like, I want the stones closer to the wall, you don't want it closer to the wall. Again, we are so zoomed in here that it's very, very misleading. Okay, you're just going to have to have your customers trust you that that space is not very big in the grand scheme of things. Go out and get your ruler, measure it, get your ruler, show them exactly what that distance is. Now, the other thing is you can see that my prongs vary in different sizes. This is an earring. It's not going to get a lot of wear and tear, so the diameter of my prong or claw is not very big in some cases. The average size I do is 0.5 millimeters wide and actually 0.5 millimeters tall. Okay, that seems to be good. I'm not getting a lot of pushback from a lot of setters. Again, I do CAD modeling for the industry. I have many customers who use many different setters. And everybody wants something just slightly different. Okay. Now, the other thing, too, is how far down is this recessed area. I like to go 0.3 of a millimeter, especially on these smaller stones, if they end up being a bit larger you may want to lower it down even farther than 0.3. So again, we've got to make sure that our wall thickness is going to be wide enough to survive printing, casting, and polishing. We want to make sure that we've got enough space between the stone and the wall. I usually use 0.2. My depth is 0.3. 
my prong diameter is 0.5 and the height of my prong is 0.5. And also if I hide the gemstones, you'll notice that I just cut out area for the culet. Now, this helps with casting if you don't drill all the way through. So you can leave it up to your setter if they want to drill all the way through. But if your piece is Swiss cheese and you're using resin, you end up with a better casted piece if the metal doesn't have to navigate around all kinds of holes. Okay, that's one thing I haven't talked about in the first couple of videos. So hopefully you watch all these videos. Uh, I know I repeat myself a lot on these, so but I'm trying to not sound like a broken record here in most cases. If we come over to this ring, my depth and my width end up being with channel builder. So if I select these stones and notice I ungrouped this one here, so we'll select that middle one. And if we go into Channel Builder, my width can be anywhere between 110% to 120%. Might even be slightly wider or slightly narrower. And then I definitely want to have my calf link longer. Many times I've built a channel where I've left the default and then the prongs end up being in the solid metal and we don't want that. So we'll extend our cap length. And then the depth, I kind of eyeball it. Let's just go to the through finger viewport. And with this bead and brighter with the prongs holding the stones versus the walls, don't really have a set height I do bring this in and then I use the offset so where's my box can't find all I can do is find the extension so let's come over here and let's okay so there's our offset so I'm going to use the menu over here and just raise it up so if you'll notice the bottom of my channel is just barely below the girdle. So let's just go ahead, press enter, and I'll delete it. So again, you're going to get used to looking at your ISO curves here. I know this is the bottom because there's many, many ISO curves here representing the bottom. So I'm just barely below the girdle. So since I'm eyeballing it, let's go to back to our align dimension. And we'll go from the top to here. And again, it's 0 0.3, 0 0.35. So that's good. No one's going to get out the ruler and measure you on that. You just want to make sure that you've got a nice recessed area. Okay, the other thing too is if I hide the gemstones, notice here I just cut out an area for the pavilion. The rest of it I did drill through. The reason why I didn't drill, drill through here, here I want to show you one of my mistakes. And since this was just for a teaching, but here's a teaching moment. So if I tap F6 and go to Gem Cutter, and I'll just stick with this default, which I did. So you can see here that the cutter is going to cut through, which is great because all of these stones will be able to get, they'll get some light in the back because we've drilled these holes. So let's press enter. Let's go back to perspective. So right there, I did not like that look. So if I go into cutters, boolean, oops, oh, that was trim. Hang on a second. Let's go into cutters, boolean. You're the cutter. We'll select this piece. You're the object and do boolean. There you go. I did not like this look. And I guess it's okay, but technically, if this was a real piece, I would have made sure that this curve, so if we turn on control points, I would have pulled it into about here, halfway. 
so that I could have cleared this and not have that mistake. But again, that's me. Yes, I would spend the extra time to do that. Some people would say, forget it. You're not going to see it. But again, you can see it. And if you're trying to achieve, you know, a fine piece of jewelry, then you would make the correction, especially if you're going to mass produce this ring. You know, if it's a one-off, you know, it's up to you on whether you want to have those holes exposed. But if it is a production piece and it's in your line, you're going to want to make this thing absolutely perfect so that it can be easily casted cleaned up, stone set, out the door, and making mass volumes of it so that everybody's job is easy peasy. Trust me, production pieces for manufacturers, they will have you keep tweaking the piece over and over and over again until they've got the production down so that it's very easy peasy for all your teammates. And yes, I will be the first one to stress that jewelry is a team sport. Now, I live in a major city where there's setters and casters and jewelers, all with separate companies. Now, if you're in a small town, you may have a multi-talented goldsmith that's doing it all, or maybe that's you. But jewelry still is a team sport and you need to get feedback from all the players just to make sure everybody plays nicely and that you're going to go out and make some really cool jewelry for your clients okay so let's get back to this so again the width here i'm about 0.3 i do have a distance of 0.2 the diameter of these prongs are 0.5 and the height is 0.5. Also, make sure that when you cut that channel behind these stones, that your prongs are deep into the channel. So with these prongs, the default depth is 0.2 millimeters. So I've been caught a couple of times where I have gotten the go-ahead, been in a hurry, go ahead and print it, and guess what? There are no prongs because the prongs were literally floating in outer space. So again, you got to make sure that the depth of these are right down into the metal because, again, the default is about 0.2, and you've got to make sure that you go in there and lower those. Otherwise, guess what? You're reprinting. Okay, so that is part six. I hope I gave you a few tips that you haven't learned already. Again, my name is Shelley Letwin from GV Design Canada. I have been teaching Matrix for the last 20 years. I do have online classes and videos for purchase. You can reach out if you're interested in learning more from me. So that's it for this video. I hope I see you for part seven. Thank you for sitting in.